Hey, hey, hey. How's everybody doing today? You might notice that this is not my usual scenery. Um, I am at the lake and enjoying myself, enjoying some sun and some water. Uh, my husband and my son are doing some fishing and some boating, those kind of things. Um, but I didn't want to miss our Sunday crafting session, so I brought some goodies with me here today so that we can um, still have our little Sunday crafting going on. So, I've got um, a piece of scrap wood. So, um, I told my mom about this project that I was thinking about doing and she says, oh, you know what? Um, I think your stepdad has some scrap wood in his shop that we could probably use for that. And I was like, well, he might not want to get rid of his scrap wood, Mom, but she convinced him to let me have some of his scrap wood. So this is one of the pieces of wood that I got from him. You can see it had like a hinge or something on there. And, um, excuse me, I have to sneeze. Whew. Oh, goodness, excuse me. But um, that doesn't matter. Um, we're going to paint it, and um, I'm totally into rustic anyway, so it wouldn't matter to me at all. Um, but I thought we could use this home transfer, and it's actually from the, uh, the one with the camper, the, the big um, camper and the smaller camper, and it has all the wording. Well, this is the home from the wording, and I think it's going to look great on this board. And we'll put a little something here on the side to spruce it up. Um, but first, I thought what I would do is just paint it white. So I just have some crafting paint. It says Craft Smart Acrylic Paint, and it's in white. Um, I think I bought it at Michael's for another project a year or two ago. I don't know. It's just what I had on hand. So that's what we're going to do with that. Give me one second. Um, so I thought we would paint it white and then um, use the um, black velvet chalkology to um, you put the home transfer on. So What's everybody got going on this weekend? Is anybody else doing any kind of fun things, relaxing things, I hope? Um, we decided to come this weekend and do our camping because next weekend is a holiday and we figured that it's going to be super duper packed. So um, we're doing ours today. Or this weekend, I should say. And... Let me share this to my crafting club. Um, if you're not already a part of my Facebook crafting club, I would love to have you join. Um, just look up Hen House Crafting Club, or I can leave the link um, in the comments below um, once this video is done. And um, what that is, is totally free to join. It's on Facebook. And it's the place where I share all of my crafts, I share my videos, um, and you're more likely to be able to see my videos from there than you are from my regular page. So if you wanna make sure that you don't miss anything, um, you totally wanna to join. And also I have um, some mini bundles or uh, sample packs. I call them mini projects because it's a complete project in a bag and I sell those um, in my crafting club. So um, that's something that I don't do on my regular page either. Hey Martha, thanks for joining. We're getting ready to do a fun little craft. And um, so anyway, if you're not in my Hen House Crafting Club on Facebook, I'd love for you to join. And I will put the link below um, as soon as this video is over. So, I'm trying to get your comments up here on my laptop so that I can read them a little better because my phone's kind of far across the room. Here we go. Okay, so, 
I think I have all of my supplies. Um, again, I am camping, so I'm here, or, or glamping. I like to call it glamping because, I mean, obviously I'm not in a tent. Um, we have um, a nice camper to stay in, and um, that's the way I like to do my camping, especially now that my kids are older. Um, so anyway, we're going to start off with this white acrylic paint, and um, we're going to paint this scrap piece of wood that I have. And so I just have one of these cheap sponge brushes. It was something that was easy just to pack and bring with me. Um, so that's what I have here. I need a little plate. Give me one second. isn't going to fit in that container very well so I'm just going to pour a little bit on this lid for me to work with. Okay, so let's get this going. So I'm going to paint this on and I don't even care if it's not a good thick coat and that you can see some of the wood through it or some of the blemishes, you can see there's some holes in the wood where nails and things have been um, because I like the rusted, rustic look, so I'm totally okay with that. And in fact, I have my sanding block, so um, we might even go back and sand it a little bit to distress it a little bit more. We'll see what it looks like. Um, so it doesn't have to be perfect at all. You don't have to worry about having brush lines or anything like that. Plus, if I put a thin coat on, it won't take it very long to dry. Because we don't want to sit around and watch paint dry. So I'm just going to try to quickly do this. so that we can get to the next step. I'm trying to also do it where you can see what I'm doing. So I'm calling this my home away from home craft since we're going to put the word home on here and I'm doing it here at the lake away from home. So this is my home away from home craft for the day. to go ahead and paint all sides of these kind of things because if you sit it on a table or something and um, you know it can be viewed from all sides then you want to make sure that all sides look nice. drying I thought what we could do is go ahead and make a cute little bow to put on the side I paint all over my hands that's okay it'll wash off um, because I mean we could just center the word home on the board but I thought it'd be cuter to put it off to one side and add some little embellishment on the end so I think what we'll do is while the wood is drying and it shouldn't take very long at all um, we can make a cute little bow and maybe even I have these little um, they're metal rose embellishments that um, 
if you can see them very well. I paid $1.24 and there's three roses on there, I think at Hobby Lobby. Um, I thought maybe I could put one of those in the middle of the bow. We'll have to see what it looks like, see if it looks good, but I thought that might be cute. So let me put the lid on this and move this out of the way. And I will show you the ribbons that I brought that I thought would be cute with this. Get that out of the way. Okay, so I have buffalo plaid because everybody likes buffalo plaid. And this one has um, a wire in it, so it'll hold shape um, and it'll give it a nice um, base for my bow. So I thought we would use this one. I have some others. Um, this was something I got on clearance at the Hallmark store. It's a black and white stripe. I thought it might like cute, look cute. And I wanted to give it a little bit of color. I didn't want it to be just black and white. So I did also bring this teal ribbon. Um, I have some white ribbon. I've got a variety of things here I thought if we mixed them together. This is a mini buffalo plaid. I'm not sure if you can see that very well. Um, so I have some of that, and then I have some burlap ribbon as well. So I think it'll be really cute to mix some of these together to make our bow. And of course, you know, when you go camping, you always forget things, always. It never fails. So this time, I completely forgot my phone chargers. I didn't bring a single one. We have three of them. I have two cell phones. My husband has one. So we have three phone chargers. I didn't bring a single one. Luckily, um, my husband had one in his car um, that we could plug into the camper. And then we also, on another camping trip, we purchased one of those that you just put, um, it's a cordless one. You just lay your phone on top of it and it charges. So we had one of those. The only problem with them is they charge really slowly. The other thing I forgot is scissors. So, you know, I have these ribbons that I need to make a bow with, and I sat down to get ready to do this video and was like, I don't have any scissors. So these are kitchen scissors, but we're gonna do with what we have. We're using our kitchen scissors to make a bow. Hey, Melanie, I see you just popped in. I'm glad you're joining. Hope you enjoy it. We're making a little fun home away from home craft while I'm camping. Wish you were here. Um, so let's see, we don't want our bow to be too big because this is what we're putting it on and we don't want it to overwhelm it. So I'm just going to cut some pieces and if you've ever seen me make a bow before, it is not a traditional bow because I'm horrible at those. Um, I do a crisscross bow and, um, I learned it from uh, Brooke at, with Refabbed. Um, she makes some super cute crafting videos and stuff. If you ever want to look her up, I love them. Um, but she showed me how to do, or she had a video showing how to do um, where you crisscross. So we'll do a crisscross of this one, and then we'll do a crisscross of another one, and so on. And then I'll show you how we tie it all together. And it doesn't matter if they're the same lengths. If we don't like it at the very end, we can trim it up and it'll turn out perfect. <laughs> Melanie's saying she wishes she was here too. Um, next time, Melanie, hopefully you guys can join us next time. We're having a good time. We had a little rain shower a minute ago and I decided, well, this is the perfect time for me to go get set up for my video because um, you can't really enjoy the great outdoors while it's raining. So, um, or you could, but I didn't want to get all wet. So maybe by the time I'm done with this video, the rain will be all over and we can go hop in the lake and enjoy some fun in the lake. So I'm just crisscrossing. I hope you can see this. So I'm cutting a couple of strips of each of the colors that I want to use and crisscrossing it. Now I'm going to do a couple of the white ones. Oh, 
like that, and then maybe a couple of the mini buffalo plaids. Do a couple of those. Right. Then you just need to decide um, which one you want to tie in the middle. Oh, you know, I know what else I wanted to do. I wanted to add some raffia. It's messy to work with, but it's super cute. Um, it goes with the rustic farmhouse decor, and it's also great for fall decorating and such. So I'm going to get a little bit of this and cut it off, and we're going to add that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it around a couple of times to get it about the size I want my bow to be. And then kind of squish it up on the ends. And I'm going to sit it right in the middle and I'm going to get a small piece of ribbon. So I'm going to go ahead and use this mini buffalo plaid since I already had it cut. You could also use twine or any other color ribbon. And then I'm going to flip my bow over and tie it really tight. it up a little bit when you do that. So now we just need to move the ribbon around a little bit so that you can see each of the colors. And I think I'm going to snip the ends of the raffia a little bit to make it look a little fluffier and crazier. So I had twisted it or curled it around, so I'm just going to snip some of the ends to break it loose. That one's a little bit long, so I'm going to take it off. These are a little bit long, I'm going to take those off and snip a couple of these ends over here. And then I'm just going to kind of squish them in to fluff them up like that. And then you have a cute little bow. with raffia. I guess it's not a traditional bow, but you have a cute little embellishment. Let me cut this one a little bit, sticking out a little too far. Here we go. So that's what it looks like so far. Hey, Tinny. Tinny's camping with me and she must be next door watching me. So we're making a home away from home craft. Uh, we just finished making this bow while we were waiting for our little piece of wood to dry. Move this stuff out of the way. So I think our wood is going to be good to work with now. So I'm going to move that back over here so that we can work with it. So this is just a piece of scrap wood and I've painted it with some white acrylic paint. Um, and it's got some holes and some blemishes in it, but I am not worried about that one bit because I'm going for that rustic farmhouse look. Um, so I just put a thin coat of the white acrylic paint, and now I'm going to take my sanding block. Sorry, I shook the table. Keep hitting my knee underneath there. Um, and I'm just going to rough up some of the edges to take off a little bit of the paint that we put on and let the brown show through. Um, you could also use an electric sander for this, but as I said, I am camping, so I just brought what I felt like would be easy to drag with me. So that we could still do our little craft project today. So, I like to go over the edges. The, sh the sharp edges, it softens up the edges and it allows the brown to show through there. And then just quickly go over the top a little bit. And I don't know if you can see, but it brings out some of the grain in the wood. And I'm gonna go ahead and do both sides because like I said, if you put it on a table or something where you can see both sides, 
I like for it to look pretty on, on all sides so that you can see from no matter which direction you are looking. Okay. So this is looking good. Some of that excess paint off. Give us kind of a whitewash look, I guess. Right. Here we go. Thanks, Melanie. It won't be too much longer and we'll have it done. Making a dusty mess in here. Okay, so now that we have that done, we just need to figure out what side we want to work with. And actually, we could totally do both sides, um, but probably for today's video, I'll just do one side. I might go back and put something on the other side um, later on. So, I think I'm going to put this home transfer on this side so that we can put our little bow embellishment over here on this side. Um, and this is not a slick, shiny surface, so we do not need to fuzz this transfer. It should be perfectly fine just putting it on the wood the way that it is. So we're not gonna be fuzzing it like we normally do. So I'm just gonna try to center it up, you know, up vertically here and then put it over here to the left side as best I can. I think. I think I'm off a little bit. That should be good. So you just want to make sure that all of the area around the screen is stuck down so that when we come over with our chalk paste it doesn't ooze up under the edges and um, mess up our design. All right, so today we're using the black velvet chalk paste. First thing you wanna do is to stir it up. You wanna make sure that it's a yogurt consistency. If it's too thick, you can add a drop or two of water and just stir it up really well until it gets to the right consistency. And it's still good to use. It's not wasted if it um, starts to get thick. Okay, and I think we're good to go there. Just wipe off the edges. And, and. Okay, so now that we've got that done, I'm gonna use a small squeegee, put a little bit of the black chalk paste on there. Okay, and I'm going to try really hard not to get this on my white board. I'm not sure it would come all the way off. I'm going to slowly and gently drag it across, not pressing down, just gliding across until the whole thing is covered. Okay. Once the whole thing is covered, you can put the excess back in the jar still good and then I'm going to stand up my squeegee and drag it across to remove the excess and put it back in the jar. Just like that. And we're just going to do that a couple of times until we've removed all of the excess off of our transfer. That's good. Set that aside. Make sure I don't have it on my fingers to get it all over my board. And now we're going to lift it up. So when you're lifting, you want to try to lift from one whole side, not just from a corner. Because if you pull from the corner, you could stretch and mess up your screen. So I'm just going to lift it up one whole side. There we go. Look at that. 
Makes it look like I have beautiful handwriting, huh? And I have terrible chicken scratch handwriting. <laughs> so it's pretty awesome that I can make these signs and things with such pretty fonts that makes it look like it was handwritten. So now what we need to figure out is we have our bow that's going to go over here. We can either tie it if we have enough uh, length in our ribbon or we could hot glue it on there either way. But do we want to put a little rose in the center? Can you see that? Let me stand up so you can see it better. Do you like it with the rose? Or without the rose? Of course, I need to scoot it over a little bit so it's not covering up my H. What do you guys think? I wonder if I have enough of this to tie it. I could get an itty bitty bow back there, but I think I'm gonna glue it. I have my hot glue gun over here, heated up and ready to go. Let me grab it. So, I, I like the way the ribbon looks wrapped around the edges here. So I think what I'm gonna do is turn it over right here and put some glue on my board. bring the ribbon across. Trying not to burn my fingers. Like that. I should be on with this. strings off here. So I've glued it on the back side here. Not straight at all, obviously. Let me slide it over. And this is what we have so far. I think I kind of like it without the little rose in the middle. I think I'll leave it like that. So you can see the back side where I got a big old glob of glue in my ribbon. So now what I can do is once this is dry, I can come back and put something here and put another little bow right here and we'll have a two-sided design. All right. Well, thank you all for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. I've had fun crafting with you today. I've enjoyed, um, making my little home away from home craft and now I'm going to clean up my mess and do a little bit of relaxing at the lake with my family and I hope that you're going to do a little bit of relaxing on your own to get yourself ready for the work week. Um, I'll be back next Sunday with another new craft. I hope to see you all here with me and have a wonderful Sunday.